Hi, welcome to the Aqua Resonance Chemistry. Now, we will continue the lectures on coordination chemistry. I think this is the part 6. So, before going to the topic, I will share with you some debate between the two great scientists. Uh, debate between the two great scientists. Those are Sorgensen and Blomstrand. These two scientists are proposed a chain theory which helps uh, the nitrogen valency number is 5. So the chain theory explains the nitrogen valency number is 5. Now these two scientists based on their chain theory they are debate with the great scientist Alfred Werner. Alfred Werner. So in between them a debate continues for several years. So in between them those points which are opposite to each other we will discuss it clearly pin to pin. So the first discussion, the first debate between them, so valency of complex compound. Valency of complex compound. Now, the second debate, so the shape of complex compound. So coordination number six, shape. Either octahedral, or hexagonal planar or hexagonal pyramidal or trigonal prism or trigonal antiprism trigonal antiprism the third one is optical activity optical activity of carbon free elements carbon free elements so these three topics is these three topics which helps a lot of big debate between them a lot of big debate between them so according to first first point the valency of complex so based on this sorgensen and blomstrand proposed a chain theory based on the nitrogen valency number 5 but werner's proposed a theory which is nothing but werner's theory it gives the it gives the information about valencies it is two types one is a primary valency another one is a secondary valency but second type Coordination number 6 shape. Coordination number 6 shape. Maybe the coordination number 6 means hexagonal planar or hexagonal pyramidal or trigonal prismatic structure. Trigonal antiprismatic structure. Final one is octahedral. So, according to chain theory, it, it does not uh, help uh, to determine the structures uh, either octahedral or hexagonal pyramidal. But uh, coordination number, but Werner's theory which helps the octahedral complex uh, is coordination number 6. Uh, Sorry, uh, I did a mistake. Coordination number six shape is octahedral. Coordination number six shape is octahedral due to the Werner's theory. Due to the Werner's theory. Now the third one is optical activity of carbon-free elements. That is nothing but totally inorganic elements. Total inorganic elements. So the optical activity of inorganic elements. Werner uh, Werner's proposed a theory, but uh, almost all many more chemi chemist chemists does not obey Werner's rule. But uh, again, uh, his hypoth hypothetical work on Sorgensen complexes, uh, like uh, that is nothing but cobalt, uh, cobalt NH3 four times, OH taken twice, three. So, uh, he, he, Werner's also worked on Sorgensen complex and it gives uh, D and L isomers uh, that the theory was explained the optical activity of uh, carbon free elements. So these three points are the major topic in uh, big debate. In big debate. We will discuss the one by one clearly. Based on these three theories, uh, he got the Nobel Prize in 1913. He got the Nobel Prize in 1913. Generally, valency of complex compounds uh, he gave in 1893 in his PhD thesis, in his PhD thesis. Now the second one, the shape of uh, complex compounds uh, which was uh, helped to determine the coordination number 6 shape is octahedral. He, he proposed or he accounted the theory in 1907. He accounted the theory in 1907. Finally, he got the Nobel Prize in 1913. So 
He was uh, earlier died in 1953, around 1950 or 53, at the age of 53. Yeah. Now, the first topic is valency of complex compounds. Now, we discussed the first uh, uh, chain theory followed by the valence theory. How they are failure to explain the valency of uh, uh, complex compounds, how the Werner succeed to explain the various valency of electro complex compounds. Now, the first chain theory. So, both the scientists will work together on same complexes like cobalt and H3 six times, Cl3, uh, such, uh, such type of series. Now, according to chain theory, so the shape of complex cobalt NH3 six times Cl3 shape like this cobalt NH3 Cl. NH3, 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 NH3 Cl. Here NH3 Cl. Now, so according to the chain theory, cobalt NH3 5 times Cl3, that means cobalt NH3 Cl, NH3, 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 NH3 Cl. Now here direct Cl. So here chlorine atom directly bound to the cobalt. Now, the third complex is cobalt NH3 five times, 4 times Cl3. 4 times Cl3. Now here cobalt NH3 Cl, sorry, Cl NH3 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 Cl. Now here direct Cl. Now the final complex is cobalt NH3 3 times Cl3. Cobalt direct Cl, Cl. NH3, 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 direct CL, direct CL. Now, but according to Werner's theory, the complex is like this, cobalt NH3 six times Cl3, cobalt NH3 five Cl, Cl2, cobalt NH3 four times Cl2, here Cl, cobalt NH3 3 times Cl3 times. So according to chain theory, so we get the uh, clarity information about uh, strength of the metal and uh, metal and ligand bonds, metal and ionized ligand bonds. So in generally, so nitrogen attached to chlorine is very unstable when compared to directly metal bounded chloride, directly metal bounded chloride. Here, metal bounded chloride uh, more stronger. Metal bounded chloride is more stronger than ammonium attached chloride. Ammonium attached chloride. Here, it is a very stronger bond. So, according to chain theory, metal bounded chlorides, uh, that means a metal bounded bond cannot dissociate easily. According to chain theory, the metal directly bounded halides cannot be dissociated, but uh, ammonium attached chlorides are readily dissociated. By using the electrolytical conductance theory, so ammonium chloride readily dissociated. Here, it, it, it first dissociation takes place, it gives one ion, now second ion, third ion. So this complex all are one ion, so three chlorides are three ions. So generally, three plus one, here, uh, it gives a number of ions is four. Number of ions is four, but in case of second complex, it gives only two ions. It gives only two. Uh, again, the complex is another ion, third, three ions. It gives uh, three ions. Now here only one dissociation, one bond dissociation takes place. Now here chloride is one ion, remaining complex is another ion. Now it gives uh, two ions. Now it gives uh, two ions. Here cobalt NH3. Here dissociation takes place. Again it gives two ions. Again it gives uh, two ions. But uh, according to Werner's electrolytical conductance theory, it gives the first complex, it dissociated into like a complex plus 3 plus 3 Cl minus. Now here the complex is 1 ion, chlorides are one, uh, 3 ions, 1 plus 3, here 4. Now here 3 ions due to the complex plus 2, 2 Cl minus. That means uh, 3 ions, here 2 chlorides, 1 complex ion. Now here in case plus 1 and Cl minus, that means uh, 2 ions, that means uh, 2 ions, here it is a uh, non-electrolyte, cannot dissociate it into further particles, that's why here there is no electrolytical conductance, but so here the, with the help of these complexes, Werner's proposed theory is obeyed, Werner's proposed theory is obeyed, to, due to, so the fourth complex, 
cannot dissociate it into further particles. That means it is a non-electrolytical non complex. But according to chain theory, it is electro electrolytical conductance. That's why the chain theory was failed and Werner's theory was, was obeyed. Werner's theory was uh, obeyed. This is the first, first rule to obey the Werner's. Now, Werner's, how they are explained primary and secondary valency with the help of these structures, with the help of these structures. Werner's theory on various valencies, various valency. According to Werner's, it, it is a two valences. It is a two valences. The first one is a primary valency. Second one is a secondary valency. According to primary valency, in modern terminology, primary valency is nothing but a oxidation number. Primary valency is nothing but a oxidation number. But secondary valency is nothing but a coordination number. Coordination number. So, primary valency is ionizable valency. It readily ionizes. Again, it is non-directional. Non-directional. I will mention here. Again, Coordination number, which is nothing but secondary valency, is non-ionizable. Secondary valency is non-ionizable. Third one, so primary valency, which indicates an ionization sphere. Ionization sphere, which is nothing but a coordination sphere. Left and right side ions is nothing but ionization sphere. Ionization sphere. But coordination number, nothing but a secondary valency, which is tells about the coordination sphere or coordination entity. So, in coordination entity means we, it, which is enclosed in metal along with some of the ligands and along with some of the ligands. Based on the number of ligands, we can find the structure of the complex compound, structure and shape of the complex compound. That's why secondary valency is responsible for the shape of the complex compounds but primary valency cannot be responsible for the shape of the complex compounds but according to fifth point it will base a negative ions only but uh, secondary valency it will base a negative positive as well as a neutral ligands also neutral ligands are ions also but the sixth one according to uh, a very simple manner to find the primary and the secondary valency so he, he gave the a simple representation also so according to that uh, it's shown by the primary valency in dotted lines secondary valency in thick line so according to Werner's theory he represented the complexes uh, like a well-known manner so which conditions to favor or to obey the representation of the Werner's complexes so the first one is precipitation method these are the evidences precipitation method. So according to precipitation method, Werner's complexes like this. So in generally, a silver nitrate which is used for the confirmation of chloride anions. Silver nitrate which is used for the confirmation of chloride anions. Now here one chlorine is present. So we will add that one equivalent of a silver nitrate. Now we will get a one mole of a AgCl as a precipitate as a precipitate now we will we will add at the one equivalent now we will get one mole so here if we will add at the two equivalents now we will get two equivalent of AgCl like that silver nitrate which is used for the confirmation of chloride ion so Werner's hypothesis very ex explain the manner based on the precipitation method. So according to the Werner's theory precipitation method, so the first complex is cobalt NH3 6 times Cl3. So it gives excess of AgCN3, AgNO3. It reacts with excess of AgNO3. It gives 3 moles of AgCl as a precipitate. 3 moles of AgCl as a precipitate. It tells about uh, these chloride ions uh, or available at ionization sphere only. So according to Werner's uh, introduction, coordination compounds cannot be dissociated like uh, Werner's as well as uh, Sorgenson theory. So that's why cobalt NH3 six times still retain the coordination sphere, but uh, remaining three complexes like this, remaining three chloride ions uh, uh, like present at the ionization sphere. Now here, three chloride ions will be removed. Now we will get a plus three charge. Now we will get a plus three charge. So which is came from Cl minus of three moles. Cl minus of three moles. So according to second example, cobalt NH3 five times Cl, here Cl2. 
So two equivalent of AG and O3 will give two AgCl, two AgCl along with cobalt and H36 times plus two. NH36 times plus 2. Now the third one is cobalt NH3 4 times Cl2 here Cl. So it will give only one equivalent of AgNO3 cobalt 1 AgCl. Cobalt NH3 4 times Cl2. So I did a mistake. I just verified it here. Cl NH3 5 Cl1 time. Now here NH3 4 times. Cl2 times. Now the fourth fourth one is cobalt and H3 four times Cl3. So here we use the excess of Ag and O3. Now we did not get any precipitate. No precipitate. So according to precipitation method, it gives cobalt plus three as a complex. Now three chloride ions. Now here two chloride ions, one chloride ions. There is no chloride. That means uh, here. All the chloride ions act as a duality, like a primary as well as a secondary. Now here, one chloride ion precipitated, remaining two chloride ions act as a duality. Now here, one, two chlorides uh, pre, uh, to form the precipitate, one of the chloride ion which has shown the duality nature. Now here, all the chloride ions to form the, to form the precipitate, there is no dual character in first complex. So, by using the second method, which is nothing but... Uh, Cryoscopic method. Cryoscopic method. Now we concluded that the total number of ions. So which gives the information about uh, the total number of ions. According to cryoscopic method, here the number of ions is 3. All the complex are taken as a 1 ion. Now here 1 plus 3, it gives 4 ions. It gives 4 ions. Now here 2 plus 1, 3 ions. Here 1 plus 1, 2 ions. Here only no precipitate means a complex itself present as a one ion. That's why it is one. That's why it is a non-electrolyte, non-electrolyte. Again, the third method which helps that. So magnitude charge, which is nothing but a electrolytical conductance, which is also known as a molar conductance measurement. Molar conductance measurement. So, which helps that charge on the complex ion, charge on the complex ion. According to molar conductance, here the total charge is 6. The total charge is 6. That means here plus 3, here 3 Cl minus, 3 Cl minus, here Cl minus means minus 1. So, th such type of minus 1 is present as a triple time. So, that's why here 3 minus plus 3, the overall charge is 6, here plus 3 and plus 3. 3 minus plus 3 and 3 minuses 3 minuses that means uh, plus 3 and minus 1 plus 3 and minus 1 now here the total number of valency here plus 2 and minus 2 is molar conductance is 4 ch charges like this plus 2 and minus 1 plus 2 and minus 1 now here minus 1 means 2 moles minus 1 now here 1 plus 1 2 plus 1 and minus 1, plus 1 and minus 1. Here, there is no molar conductance, only 1. There is no charge here, 0. Here, charge is 0. That's why it is a molar conductance. It is a known electro. With the help of these three theories, Werner's classically shown those complexes very explanatory manner. So, the first complex is cobalt NH3 6 times Cl3. Now the second complex is cobalt NH3 5 times Cl, Cl2. Now the third complex is cobalt NH3 4 times Cl2, here Cl. Now the third complex is cobalt NH3 3 times Cl3, Cl3. So according to Werner's publication, the color of the complex is yellow, purple, here, it, it, it gives uh, two isomers. So one is a cis and a trans isomer. So, cis and a trans isomer. Cis gives a violet color. Trans shown like a green color. So, uh, very simple manner to find it. Uh, CV of TG. CV of TG. So, like uh, TG is uh, your friend names so like that. Now, the fourth one. So, which shown bluish green color. 
bluish green color so how werner's uh, represent their their complexes now according to werner's introduction so coordination compounds cannot co coordination compounds shown with a thick line like a coordination number shown with a thick line here six ammonia represent like this so remaining three which is which is placed at uh, ionization sphere th that's why which are placed which are shown in dotted line which are shown in dotted line so this is the complex of the first vernus so the color of the complex is yellow now the second one is cobalt so here one of the chloride ion which shown the duality character like a, which act as a primary valency as well as a secondary valency primary valency as well as secondary valency that's why it shown like this nh3 remaining five are nh3 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 so this is the complex so the remaining two are shown like this these are the primary valencies now here cobalt so here two chloride ions act as a duality like a primary valency as well as a secondary valency remaining four are ammonias so this is the third complex the remaining one is chloride so here all the com all the ions just only secondary valency but uh, exceptionally the chlorine shown duality the chlorine shown duality this is the representation of the fourth one so now we will discuss the each and every point in Werner's valency theory. Very Werner's valency theory. So cobalt NH3 six times Cl3, which which appeared in yellow color, which shown in the representation like this. Here there is no chloride ion act as a duality. All the ions present as usually like a secondary as well as a primary. But in case of a second complex, it's shown purple color. So here one of the chloride ion it acts as a both a primary as well as a secondary that's why we use both those two symbols according to introduction of awareness now the third one it gives two types of isomers one is a cis and a trans isomer so cis isomer is violet a trans isomer is green so very simple tricky manner cv of tg now here which are shown like this here two chloride ions act as both primary and secondary remaining chloride ion which act, which act as only primary now the fourth one here all the chloride ions all the chloride ions act as a primary and secondary so that's why all the chloride ions shown duality all the chloride ions shown duality now now the topic number two between the Sergenson and Vanos theory shape of coordination number six shape of coordination number six so now according to Sorkinson, the shape of coordination numbers are like this. So the first one hexagonal planar, the second one hexagonal pyramidal, the third one trigonal prismatic structure. Fourth one, trigonal antiprismatic structure. Fifth one, octahedral structure. Octahedral structure. So this octahedral structure was proposed by the Werners. Remaining all are proposed by the Sorgenson and Blomstrand. So uh, not not Blomstrand, Sorgenson only. So now here, hexagonal planar, hexagonal pyramidal, trigonal prism trigonal antiprism octahedral among these five these four gives three isomers octahedral only gives two isomers so now what are those three isomers in the hexagonal planar so this is the hexagonal planar cobalt for example the best example of uh, two isomers is cobalt nh3 four times cl2 plus this is the werner's complex now it gives two types of isomers so one is a uh, cis and transform 
cis is nothing but violet color trans is green color so we also discussed the cvtg cv tg so the now the shapes of uh, hexagonal planar structure is cobalt like this now here chlorine chlorine remaining all are ammonias let us assume the, our convenience l is equal to nh3 now here l l l l so second one is cl cl remaining all are l so here cobalt now the third structure is like uh, ortho para meta chloro chloro remaining all are l it gives three isomers it gives uh, three isomers now hexagonal planar structure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here, L, L, one isomer. Sorry, CL, CL, one isomer. Remaining all are L, L. Now, the third one is. So, L, L, second isomer. Cobalt. L, L, third isomer. Here, it is also gives three isomers. Now, trigonal prismatic structure. Trigonal prismatic structure here cobalt metal which is con which is connected to the all six ligands. Now it is a trigonal prismatic structure. Here chlorine, chlorine one isomer, then cobalt. Now here chlorine, chlorine second isomer, then third one. Here chlorine and chlorine, these are the third structure. Remaining all are L's. So similarly, here it is also gives three structures. Now the fourth one is trigonal antiprism. If one prism like left hand side, another prism like right hand side, in between them cobalt metal connector. So now here similarly chlorine and chlorine. Now second isomer chlorine and chlorine. Chlorine and chlorine. The third isomer. Chlorine and chlorine. So th this is also gives four types of structure. But uh, according to Werner's cobalt NH3 four times Cl2, it gives only two isomers. But remain, uh, Sorgensen proposed uh, remaining all the structures was rejected due to it shown three types of isomers. But uh, Werner's theory was proposed an octahedral structure that gives uh, full clear cut information about octahedral structure isomers. Now it is nothing but uh, octahedral cobalt. Now here Cl, Cl, ammonia, ammonia, ammonia. Now those are the L for our convenience. So this is the complex, a cis complex, which is nothing but says this appeared at a violet color. Now the second one is trans complex. Second one is a trans complex, which is appears green color, which is appears a green color. So this is the second debate between the Sorgensen and Werner's. So according to Werner's octahedral shape, cobalt NH3 four times Cl2 plus, it gives only two structures. That's why octahedral theory was proposed in 1907. Sorgensen theory was rejected. So Werner developed his theory so many features when when Sorgensen de defended chain theory vigorously defended chain theory vigorously now the third theory third debate between them is optical activity of carbon free compound carbon free compound Optical activity of carbon free compound. So, this is the third debate between the Sorgensen and the Werner's. So, now according to Werner's, 
CO NH3 taken four times, so Cl2 is optically active. There is no carbon atom. There is no carbon atom. But this theory was uh, opposed by so many chemi chemi chemists or chemical scientists. So, so many chemical scientists. That's why he, he, he is uh, apithetically used Sorgensen complex. Cobalt, cobalt, NH3 four times, OH taken twice, three times his complex. And take the Sorgensen complex uh, as his experiments. Now he used some ligand which is nothing but alpha like D and L alpha bromo pyrates and alpha bromo camphor pisulfonates as resolving agents as a resolving agent now he will get a optically active isomers optically active isomers so the third theory so since this compound was synthesized by the surgeon's son, but it is explained by the quad, uh, Werner. So that's why it is also another theory of uh, Werner. Now the structure of cobalt like this, cobalt. Now, so three equivalents of uh, another octahedral cobalt molecule. So which is like this, OH, OH, now here cobalt, OH. OH now here cobalt molecule OH OH so remaining all are uh, four am amine ligands remaining four are amine ligands so this is the structure of cobalt cobalt NH3 four times OH taken twice uh, total three times which is shown which is shown by the using of a resolving agent D and L alpha bromo camphor Pisulfonates. It is. It gives optically active isomers. Now this time also Werner successfully synthesized with optically active carbon-free elements. Optically active carbon-free elements. These three theories was helpful to get the Nobel Prize of uh, Werner's. Now, Now, evidences of awareness theory. Evidences of awareness theory. So the first one is the electrolytical conduct method, conduction method. Now the second one is cryoscopic method now the third one is precipitation method now the fourth one is electron spin electron spectra electron spectra fifth one is x-ray spectra sixth one is magnetic momentum magnetic uh, momentum so these six the these six experiments uh, which helps uh, to evidences of the Werner's complexes to evidences of the Werner's complexes now the first one electrolytic conductance method according to electrolytic conductance the number of L Ions increases, the number of ions or electrical charged particles increases, the molar conductance increases, molar conductance increases. So number of charged particles increases, particles directly increases, then molar conductance increases, molar conductance increases. That's why here cobalt NH3, 6 Cl3, here it in number of charged particles are increases. So now here four charged particles, then greater than that of cobalt NH3, four times, uh, five times Cl, Cl2, like a cobalt NH3, four times Cl2, Cl. Now greater than that of cobalt NH3, 
taken three times Cl3. So this is the order of uh, molar conductance, uh, molar conductance. Now the cryoscopic method. So we know we are all are about, uh, aware about it, uh, the cryoscopic method. Cryoscopic method which is in which is used in the depression of freezing point, which is used in the depression of a freezing point. In depression of a freezing point, so the number of particles increases, depression of a freezing point increases, more cryoscopic constant increases. So depression of a freezing point which is used in the colligative properties, colligative properties. So the number of ions increases, then depression in freezing point increases, then cryoscopic constant increases, cryoscopic constant increases. So this is the second method. Third method we already discussed the number of uh, silver nitrate uh, required which which tells about uh, the chloride ions free at uh, ionization sphere. Ionization sphere we are already discussed in the precipitation method as well as cryoscopic electrolytic conductance. Now by using the electronic spectra we are calculate the energy diagrams of energy diagrams of orbitals energy diagrams of orbitals by with the help of x-ray spectra we can calculate the bond angle and bond length bond angle and bond length on the structure with the help of magnetic momentum we can differentiate whether it is a tetrahedral molecule or octahedral molecule or square planar molecule Majorly magnetic momentum which helps the shape of molecule coordination number 4 molecule either tetrahedral or square planar which is also helps either it is octahedral also tells. So now these three, these six methods which are evidences for the Werner's theory, which are evidences for the Werner's theory. Again, Werner's, Werner's synthesized papers and synthesized and published their papers almost till 150 which are like a platinum which are also involved in the platinum complexes platinum NH3 four times like a NH3 six times Cl4 Cl4 complexes which is also helps to now the uh, electronic conductance method of Werner's theory. Thank you for watching.